Hey, 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 what's up, my good people? Welcome back to the J. Franklin Jr.'s YouTube channel where I'm discussing and talking about and showing you how to make your business very, very successful, how to operate it, but how to get all these good things going for your business. I'll give you great tips on, you know, how to just get your business very profitable and very successful. So, today, 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 we are talking about, do you need a business plan to have a successful business? Woo! Stay tuned and I'll tell you more about it. Okay, okay, we're back. So listen, do you need a business plan to have a successful business? That's a great question. Very, very, very great question. Okay, let me tell you something. Well, I've never had a business plan written for myself to do, to sell, to do anything for my businesses. Uh, That's just me personally. I just never had a uh, written one. I believe I can talk better uh, to an investor or someone without giving them a business plan. Because think about it. You take all day, write this long business plan, blah, 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 about 30 pages long. You know, when you're using college, they say, write a business plan, y'all know how to write this, y'all know how to write that. But listen, when you get in front of an investor, all he's gonna pretty much look at is like the first two pages of your business plan. It's gonna either catch his eye or it's not gonna catch their eye. If it catches their eye, they're not gonna read anymore because what they're gonna do is call you in to complete the interview. They're gonna to wanna to interview after that. But for the ones that are out there who, you know, have already started on a business plan, I don't wanna discourage you and say that, you know, don't have a business plan because it, it can be very valuable to your business. I just wanna give you a few key points on how that business plan could, or what you should have in your business plan. Uh, and there is a, a statistic from uh, Harvard University that 50% uh, of successful businesses have a business plan and 50% of businesses that are successful don't have a business plan. So it don't matter if you do or you don't. But see, all right, so now I'm just gonna give you a few pointers, here it is. Uh, within a business plan, make sure you are very articulate on what your company does, okay? Make sure you are very articulate on what your business does. That's one. And what is your company going to do and how are you going to make money? Very, very big. You can actually come up with that one paragraph. So when I say be, be very articulate in your business, just, just understand what your business, understand your passion. Why are you trying to do this? Just be very, very articulate. Uh, so the articulation and everything is going to be very, very big key. Obviously, you need to know what your business does and you need to know how your business is going to make money. So when you get in front of an investor and uh, they get to talk to you, some of the major things that they're going to be uh, wondering is, do you understand your own business? So you want this investor to come give you $500,000 in your business. Do you really understand your business? A lot of people don't really realize that. Like, have you ever saw, thought and sat back okay, and said, like, all right, if I went to an investor, and this man told me that this investor, he invests $10 million all the time. But okay, if you get in front of him or threw it out the window, would you really understand how your business ran without reading? That's a big, big thing. Because just keep in mind, once you deliver that business plan, you have to be very articulate on talking about what's in that business plan without even reading it at all. He will have the, uh, the manual, because that's what I call it. Your business plan is a manual. That's all it is. So... Will you be able to read your own manual that you uh, took this precious time out, this time that you do not get back to write that business plan? Can you read it word for word? Well, I wouldn't say word for word, but in a one page and one paragraph, can you read all of that back to that man? If he read that whole page and then asked you to talk about it, can you read it back? So you need to understand what you're putting in this business plan. Also, you need to understand your market. Understand who's in your market. 
Like so many businesses do uh well, people who are trying to start a business don't really understand what's in their market. Such as like if you're in uh, real estate, okay, and you're in this uh I'm just Las Vegas. Okay, if you're on a certain area of Vegas, are they selling homes or are they renting homes? So is this a seller's market or a renter's market? Understand the market before you get a real estate firm or uh, uh, start a real estate office or become a real estate investor. You put all this money and time, you're trying to get an investment to get you millions of dollars so you can start flipping homes and doing this. But if you get all that money and you don't even know if you're in a renter's market, a renter's market or a seller's market, it's very, the, the money is useless then because you're just getting money just to see money. Half the time people get all this money and don't even know what to do with it even when they had a manual written down. Because nine times out of 10, what you, what you have written what you have written down in your uh, manual, that's what I'm gonna call this business plan, the manual. What you would have wrote in your manual is typically gonna change right after you get the money. Every time you just think of a product, once you make that product or a business that comes with a logo or anything, once you create that nine times 10 about six months to a year down the line, you're gonna change 65% of what you just uh, put down in that business plan. Reason being, because you're just going off of what you think might happen. Now, once you get into reality, it's gonna be a whole nother story. So that's that, and continue going. Also, when an investor, once you get in front of an investor, they're gonna want you to know, know who your competitor is. Once you put a McDonald's in a certain area, you know that you have Burger King, you might have Wendy's, you might have all these other burger places. If you uh, have a graphic designer company like myself, Know who my I know who my competitors are in certain areas in Las Vegas. I know like on this street they have this whole area blocked out. They have they taken over that. But listen, I don't care because guess what? I'm trying to be number one. So when I came to this city in this state, I came in to demolish it. So I don't care what market it is or who my competitors are because guess what? It does it's irrelevant to me. But that's what an investor will want you to understand and want you to know who is your competitor in your market. Lastly, finances. Do you understand where, how, what, all of this money that these investors are about to give you, where is all this money about to go? Okay, if I gave you a million dollars, how, well, what's the first thing this money is about to go to? After this money is gonna go to it, how will it bring me back money? What percentage am I about to get off of this money? How will the revenue stream go? Uh, how are these taxes getting handled? How is the money? Like, you have to know a lot of stuff about your finances and all of this stuff. And you have to know your proposition. So know the proposition, such as what problems are you going to solve within your business, product, or whatever it is once you step in front of an investor. So know what that is also going to be about. Lastly, do you have a passion for what you are getting yourself involved in? That's a very, 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 very great key point. And I want that to stick in your head through this whole time that you're writing your manual. If you do not have, you will know that in the process of you writing your manual. Because if you don't have a passion in it, after page two, you're gonna quit. So it's, it's just big, after page 25. If, you're not, if you don't have a passion for it, you're gonna stop doing it. So understand, figure out, say to yourself, pray, do whatever you have to do to figure out what's your biggest passion and what you're doing. My passion in my business, honestly, my passion is not within my graphic designer business. My passion is because I built a business. I like building businesses. I like starting brands. I like creating something. I like taking Play-Doh, playing around with it to, to come up with something creative. I like art, I like doing things like that. That's what, that's what I like to do, that's my passion. So since I like that in branding people, I started a graphic designing company because now I can create your brand. I can create your website, flyers, your, 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 your full brand such as your logo, understanding the passion in your own business and implementing that into your brand. All of that is a very, very, very key point in your passion. Understand that. Okay, if you use purple in your logo, do you understand the tone, the feeling, and all of that of your logo? So, and that's gonna be the first thing on your manual. <laughs> That's crazy, because on your manual, once you write down the, your, your business name, what makes that business name uh, business name significant? I mean, the purple color in your business name and your logo on the top is purple. What's so significant about purple? Is it because it's, uh, it means royalty, uh, royal? What, what, so tell me. That's what you really need to know in your business plan, in your manual. Your manual is the script of your life. 
So what I want to say last is don't focus on the business plan. Focus on your business, on your passion. Focus on that. That's very, very, very big key. Focus on that and you will have an awesome business plan. And honestly, I'll say this, all you people out there writing 25, 35 page business plans, listen, you can write all of that in two pages. One almost, but two pages. Just write a nice, just think about it, just write all of the, all of everything I had, I'm gonna have it somewhere on the screen, just write all of that stuff down. And think about your passion. Once you write down the passion that you have for this business, everything else will fall into place. I should have put that first, I'm not, but I want to keep that last because that's a big, that's a valuable key. Understanding the passion of your business. So I want you to keep that installed in you. Make sure you, uh, you can copy, copy, duplicate, or do anything you want to this and all of these uh, tools and tips that I'm giving you all. But I just want you to know, be persistent. Okay, be persistent. Whatever you do, don't quit. Be persistent, man. Keep going, keep pushing, and don't let nobody stop you. All right, be persistent. Bam! Thanks. Oh yeah, one more thing. Also, like and subscribe to this video and share it so everybody else can know a lot about it, a lot about it, a lot about it, a lot about it. But like and subscribe to this and follow me on all major platforms at J. Franklin Jr. The J. Franklin Jr. Also, at the end of this week, my website will be launched, jfranklinjr.com. I'll be having all this content. I'll be having a lot of different things on there. So continue to subscribe to me. Uh, I love you in advance, and I appreciate your support. But if you want to continue to get all this content out, just please like and subscribe and share this video so more viewers can see it. And it will. I'll be very, very, very appreciative to everything. Appreciate it. Peace.